Hey everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd Likes to Film Stuff and these finally arrived on my doorstep. I've been waiting all day for them. This is the Pixel 2 XL and the Pixel 2. I'm going to quickly unbox these, but I've been hearing all week long that the Pixel 2 XL just does not have a very good display. And a lot of you guys have been asking me to shed some light on it or just to tell you my thoughts or opinions. So I'll do that in this unboxing. What I do know is that this is manufactured by LG and the smaller one is manufactured by HTC. So LG has their panel in here and HTC seems to be using Samsung's panel. So there's going to be panel variations. And already from reviewing the Galaxy Note 8 and looking at several LG V30 displays, I can tell that Samsung has a superior display to LG's panel, which is really unfortunate. But anyway, let's go ahead and open the boxes. Double unboxing with mini karambit. Let's go ahead and grab the XL first. This is the one that I've been really excited about. Maybe I don't need the karambit. Just pull here. Move this aside. And indeed, it comes right up, so that's nice. Let's grab the phone out of the box. That's not a bad size, not a bad size at all. Let's just see quickly what's in this box. And then I won't have to do that again. So it looks like we have the charger right here, but we need to start from right here. This looks like our pamphlets and documentation. And also the SIM ejection tool is in here too. So that's good. And it looks like we've got an adapter here. Then underneath that, looks like we've got the adapter for the headphone jack. I really don't know what to think about losing the headphone jacks. I like the headphone jacks. I'm sure it's a technology I will get over eventually. And we've also got this USB-C, USB-C cable, and also the charging brick, no doubt USB-C. I'm going to attempt to keep things somewhat tidy here. I already have this all wrong. All right, put that aside. Let's go ahead and grab this one. I really wanted Panda Pixel. Really, really wanted that one, but that was sold out extremely fast. Did anyone actually even get that one? Or is it something that's shipping a little bit later? I don't even know, you guys can tell me. So Pixel 2, opening box. Alrighty, there we are. Ah, mini Pixel. Let's just go ahead and take the plastic off now. Try not to break anything. Okay. And lastly, the XL. That, that was actually easier to take the plastic off of. So LG's manufactured phone, HTC's manufactured phone. They look very, very similar except for the camera sensor placement. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of other phones just to look at the size comparisons very quickly before I turn them on. Here's a Note 8. So you can see the height difference there. So here is the Galaxy S8 Plus and the Pixel 2 XL I'd say it's probably most similar in size to the Galaxy S8 Plus. And here is the V30. You can see that smaller footprint. This has got a six inch display. The Pixel 2 XL also has a six inch display. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. And immediately as I turn on this on, I can see it's got a, a very different color temperature here at the top than it does toward the bottom. That's fantastic. You know what? I actually have another unit. I accidentally bought that one. I may go and open the box on that one and see if that screen's any better, but let's go ahead and turn this on. I bet you guys that just because this is a Samsung panel, I'm probably going to end up liking it better than the Pixel 2 XL, even though I want the larger version of the phone. Already just from here, screen uniformity looks a bit better. Now before I go and take a bit better of a look at these, you can see that both of these devices have this really nice tall display that pretty much fills up the entire bodies on both of them. Except for you can see that we've got some bezels at the top and the bottom, which I am secretly very happy about. But we need those bezels so that there's room for these front-facing stereo speakers. But there's a benefit of having something to hold on to without touching the screen. So that was part of my excitement with this phone. I agree though that the bezels on this smaller Pixel are kind of on the extreme side, wider than my thumbs. Just for the heck of it, I'm just gonna go and grab that third Pixel, you know, why not? Uh, okay, so here is the second Pixel 2 XL, the one I accidentally ordered. I don't wanna get into it. 
brand new here. Let's see if this display looks more uniform just at turn on. Now this one's kind of greenish at the bottom and more bluish at the top too. What's the deal? You know what? Let me take a better look here. Okay, so here I'm back and I had a chance to set up these phones for the most part. I've got the two XLs right here and the smaller phone. Now, before I left, I was questioning why I saw two different color tones on the displays. That's a common thing to have wonky screen uniformity, but what I was actually noticing is this incredible blue shift. So looking at it straight on, it's fine. But as soon as you tilt it, you can see that it becomes quite extreme. Now you would say, well, I only look at my phone head on, right? But I was just standing in my bedroom right now and I hold the phone about like this, but up near my face. And you can see that there is a cool tone here and a warmer tone up here. So that shift really does cause a problem. Now the shift is gone. So you're gonna have to hold it straight in front of your face without any tilt at all. And then sure, you're not gonna have this bluish look at the bottom and the warmer look at the top. So that's kind of extreme. I didn't expect that to be that bad. On the smaller phone, I had someone tell me that they had a little bit of shift on theirs, but it looks worlds better. I don't really see any shifting at all. So already this panel, which is made by Samsung, looks better than these ones here. This is 1080p and this is Quad HD, so that's a bit unfortunate. Another thing I'm noticing between both of these pixels, the larger ones only, is that they have a gritty, grainy texture to them. And that shows especially as you turn down the brightness. Now I remember when I had the Nexus 6, older generation AMOLED, that I had one that came grainy and another one that wasn't grainy. So I bet you that there are ones out there that don't look grainy as well. But my first impression on these displays is that they really remind me of much older generation, like two or three generations ago, AMOLED. That's not so good, Google. Another thing I hear people complaining about is that this display looks so dull, and in some ways I'm inclined to agree. So underneath display settings, if you go down, you see that there's vivid colors. Now I did some preliminary measurements and I could see that vivid colors just expands the range of colors a tiny bit. It was such a small difference that I had to do a double take a couple of times looking at it to have my eyes understand that yes, it is a little bit more vivid. Otherwise, the default mode is targeting sRGB, but on both of the phones that I measured, it's lacking in red. And when you're lacking in red, that's going to make skin tones not look so nice. So to compensate for that, keep the vivid mode on. And at least at this point, yes, you are getting a little bit past sRGB for the range of reds. But still with this display, I find that the white point and also the color balance of red, green, and blue is a little bit weird. It just doesn't look so nice. And I also noticed that gamma is high on both of the displays as well, which is going to also dim the image a bit. Now I have my iPhone 8 Plus here, and I know that this is a different display technology, but Apple has accurately calibrated it to sRGB and it looks fantastic. So I do think that proper calibration would really help the Pixel's display. So for those of you that are upset about the way the calibration looks, I heard that Google might be releasing a wider gamut mode, at least wider than what Vivid is right now. So that would help the display not look so dull, but I would really hope that it would conform to a calibration standard though, so that if there's content that's encoded for it, it would look right. I do think it would be really nice if Google would give us RGB slider so that we could control what the white point looks like. So on my Galaxy Note 8 here, you can see underneath the adaptive display mode that I can control the amount of green and red and blue. Come on, Google, give us some choices. That helps. Another thing that's really not helping them is their launcher. So down here, everything starts to get washed out. So when I pull this upward, you can see that the image gets a lot brighter in places. And here I have a different launcher. You can see this is how it should look. And this is what the launcher is doing. It's washing out the image. It's got like a transparency filter or something on it. Not so good as an effect, not so good at all. All of this that I am seeing right now is making me incredibly sad because I want to love this phone, but the display is what the display is. Now I'm sure they can adjust some things with better calibration, that's really gonna help, but that's not gonna take away the graininess that you see. 
just especially when you start getting to those lower brightnesses. This does not look like a phone that should cost me over a thousand dollars and it did. I'm not pleased with that. Really, really not. The display on this simply does not compare at all to the likes of what's on the Galaxy Note 8. If you keep it at 100% brightness pretty much all the time, it looks a lot better though. But this is where I tend to keep my brightness, around this area. And once I start going through web pages, that's when I really start to notice that graininess. Otherwise, playing with these in my just a little bit of time that I've had them today, these are fantastic phones. They're really fast and zippy. I'm loving that Android Oreo. These phones have top specifications and I'm really happy that we don't really have to choose. Oh, by the way, there's, there's tape on here so I can tell the difference between the two bigger phones. So we've got the same specifications, except for the size of the batteries, of course, and the size and resolution of the displays. Otherwise, we both have four gigabytes of RAM, Snapdragon 835 SoC, 12 megapixel camera. Both are IP67 water resistant, stereo front facing speakers. These are dream phones, people. We've got that fingerprint sensor where it should be. But if the display is no good, I don't know if I could stand to look at it. Help me, people. So I'll probably end up using the smaller phone because this display looks much nicer. There's no color shifting. It's a lot lower resolution. I do not find it to look any more saturated than the bigger phones, though. All of these should be calibrated to sRGB with just a little bit wider of a gamut if you push that vivid mode. So give me some time, people. Tell me your thoughts. I really don't think Google expected to have the response that they did, but hey, when you have state of the art here, people are gonna notice. So this is all that I'm going to say for now. This has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be downvoting this video and having a fit, but I'm just telling y'all what's there. So let me know your thoughts. Have a good night, you guys.